Okay, guys, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to write an exponential function in a word problem. We're going to remember that a growth means our B value is more than one and a decay value is between zero and one. The only thing with these word problems is we're going to use decimals instead of fractions. So let's write this in our notes. An exponential growth for our word problem is A times, and here is where we're going to get our B value. It's going to be 1 plus the rate of growth and then times X, where X is time. So our A is still our initial value. The R is your rate. They usually give it to you as a percentage, and we'll change it to a decimal. And then we'll add that to 1, and that will be the B value. And then X is going to always be time. The growth factor is the 1 plus the rate. The 1 from our growth factor just stands for 100% of your initial value. So we have 100% of the initial value plus the rate in which it's going to increase. Our exponential decay is going to be similar in that A is still our initial value, what we start with, and the B value is 100% minus the rate at which things are going to decay. Your X is still time. The decay factor is the 1 minus your rate. It's the B value. So the rate is just that percentage that it changed. The decay factor is the 1 minus the rate. And again, the 1 from our formula just stands for 100% of the initial value. The rate is the percent at which the function is changing. The factor includes the rate and the 100% initial value. So to determine the factor, we convert our rate to a decimal and we either add it to one if we have a growth or we subtract it from one if we have a decay. So again, the growth or decay factor is the one plus the rate or one minus the rate. The rate itself is just that percentage. So let's review how we change a decimal or a percent into a decimal. So 5% is the same as 0 0.05. If this was a growth, I would add this 0.05 to 1 and my growth factor would be 1.05. So notice the difference between our percent as a, our rate as a percent and then the factor. If we had 0.25 as our rate as a decimal, that means it was a 25%. And in this case, they say it's a decay. So we're going to have 1 minus the 0.25, and our decay factor is 0.75. So again, remember your factor is the B part of your exponential function. If we had a factor of 1.15, this tells me I had a growth because this is more than 1. And the growth rate was 15%, which is the same as 0.15. In our last example, our factor, our B, is 0.78. This is between 0 and 1, so we know this is a decay. The rate as a percent is going to be 22%, which is the same as 0.22. So again, your factor, either a growth or decay factor, is the B value that we studied, and it is the rate as a decimal added to one or subtracted from one.
So let's take a look at our first example. Here is our formula. We're either going to have a growth or a decay. And let's identify all the parts. Matt bought a car for $60,000. The resale value decreased by 15% each year. We're going to write an equation to represent the total car value. So before you, we answer this last question, so let's hold off on this and always write our generic formula. So the initial cost, the A, is $60,000. The rate is 15%, but we're going to convert that to 0.15. The B value, or the decay factor, is going to be 1 minus 0.15, which gives us 0.85. So now we're going to plug this in. F of X, the total value of the car, is going to be 60,000 times our decay factor of 0.85 raised to the X. And now we can plug in whatever amount of years that we want to determine to see our total, our end result. So our total value is going to be 60,000 times 0.85 raised to, and the question is, in five years, how much is this going to be worth? So we're going to use a calculator. We're going to do order of operations. I'm going to say 0.85 raised to the fifth, and then times 60,000. We're talking about money, so let's let our answer reflect what we would in real life. And so we have 26,622 and 32 cents. So you can see it has decreased exponentially from 60,000 to just a little over 26,000 in five years. Matt bought a classic car for 60000 The resale value increased at 15% each year. We're going to write an equation to represent the total car value. So again, let's identify all of the components. So the initial price is $60,000. The rate at which it's going to change is 15%, but we're going to write it as a decimal. Our B value, or our growth factor, because we're increasing, is going to be the 1, which is 100% of, of 60,000, plus the rate. And this gives us a, B, a growth factor of 1.15. And now let's plug it into our equation. So f of x, the total value of the car is going to be the original price. Our growth factor is 1.15 raised to the x. Now we can answer our question. The total value, and I really should write this like this, our total value in five years So again, we're going to use our calculator. We're going to do order of operations. 1.15, the growth factor, raised to the 5 times the initial amount gives us, and again, this is money, we have $120,681.43. So you can see that in five years, the car has almost doubled just a little bit um, over. It has doubled in five years. Holly's new iPhone costs $1,200. The value decreases 8% each month. Write an equation to represent the total value of the iPhone. So first, let's identify. And I'm glad we're now talking about months instead of years. So we always have to have our units, okay? We always have to consider what time is, um, the units of time. 
So the initial value of the phone is $1,200. The rate that it decreases is 8%, which is 0.08. My B value or the decay factor is one minus 0.08, which gives us 0.92. This is our B factor. So the equation is f of x equals the initial value, our A value, times the decay factor raised to the x. Now this time, our x, our time is months. So they wanna know how much will it be worth in one year? Well, we must convert years to months. So in one year or 12 months, Let's see how much the value, the value of the phone is going to be. So we have 0.92 raised to the 12th times the initial amount that she paid. And now her phone is only worth $441.20. So again, make sure that in your word problem, the rate of change, whatever that is time-wise, whenever you plug in a value, it also has to be the same unit. The Watson family purchased some land for $80,000. The value increased each year by 12%. Write an equation to represent the total value of the land. So the total amount that they paid was 80,000. We had a rate of 12% of increase. So that's 0.12. Our B value or our growth factor is gonna be one plus 0.12, which gives us 1.12. Again, this is more than one, so we know it is increasing. We're gonna put that into our equation. The initial value is 80,000 times our growth factor raised to the x, and x is years. So we want to know how much it will be worth in 20 years. So in 20 years, one point one two raised to the 20 times 80,000 gives us a total value. And again, we're dealing with money. So 771,703.45. So you can see how much it is increased. So again, exponential functions increase very drastically or they decrease very drastically, very quickly. In 2010, there were 12 rabbits in Central Park. The rabbits increased their population by 50%. Write an equation to represent the total population of the rabbits. So we initially, in 2010, this is going to be important, in 2010, we have 12 rabbits. Our rate is 50%, which is 0.5, and our B value, or our growth factor, is 1.5 plus 0.5, which gives us 1.5. So f of x equals the initial value of 12 rabbits times 1.5 raised to the x, and it is talking about years. It doesn't say that, but we're talking about 2010 and 2020, so we're going to assume it is years, number of years. So from 1210 to 1220, that's 10 years. So we're going to say in 10 years, how many rabbits are in Central Park? So we're going to say 1.5 raised to the 10 equals and then times our original amount of rabbits. So we have, here's what I see in the calculator. And it keeps going. Now we're talking about animals. So you can't have a partial of an animal. Mathematically, we would round this up to 692, but 
We can't have a partial of a rabbit, so I'm going to round to 691 rabbits. So make sure your answer um, makes sense contextually. Always see what your content is. A total of 50,000 players participate in the online zombie game. Each day, 20% of the players are eliminated. Write an equation to represent the total players remaining in the game. So we start out with 50,000 players. The rate in which they decrease is 20%, which is 0.2. Our B value or our decay factor is 1 minus 0.2, which gives us 0.8. So we have f of x is equal to our 50,000 players, our rate, our, I should say our decay factor is 0.8 raised to the x. Now let's see what x is. Each day, so x is days. The question is, what will the number of players be after one week? So one week is seven days. So really they're saying in seven days, how many players? And again, we're talking about people here, so we can't have a partial of a person. So let's see what we get. So 0.8 raised to the 7 and then times 50,000 gives us in the calculator it says 10,485.76. So we can't have a partial of a player. So I'm going to round to 10,485 players. The growth factor of virus X is 1.08. After five days, the virus has reached a total of 35.26 cells. Write an equation to represent the total number of virus cells. Okay, and what was the initial value? So here we have, we don't know our initial value. Okay, we do know that the growth factor, the B value, is 1.08. And we know that after five days, the virus has reached a total of 35.26. So this would be our f of x equals 35.26. And the x value, I could just write that in here, actually. Just write this in one expression. So in five days, we have this many cells. So let's put this all together. So 35.26 equals the initial amount of cells we started with times 1.08 raised to the fifth. So let's do our math. We need to isolate A. So let's multiply 1.08 raised to the fifth, okay, gives us 1.46932877. So I'm not going to write that down. I'm just going to round it to 1.47. 1 1.47 1 times A, and then let's divide each side. And this will give us our initial value. So 35.26 divided by 1.47 gives us about 23.986 and so forth. So that looks like it started probably at 24 virus cells. Miss Thomas took an Excedrin for her annoying headache. Each hour, a quarter of the medicine dissolves in her body. After three hours, there is 337.5 milligrams remaining undissolved. Round equation represents the total amount of medicine undissolved. So, So we do not know the A value. That's what we'll be looking for. It says each hour, a quarter of the medicine dissolves. So the rate is a quarter, okay? And I'm just gonna write that as 0.25. Our B value or our decay factor is gonna be one minus 0.25, which gives us 0.75. We do know that 
in three hours, there is 337.5 milligrams remaining undissolved. So let's put this together. We have 337.5 milligrams is the total. We don't know our initial amount. Our decay factor is 0.75, and it says and it, that was in three hours. So in three hours, we have this amount. So let's multiply, or excuse me, raise 0.75, raised to the third. We have 337.5 equals, and again, I'm going to do a little rounding, 0.42 is what I want to use, times A. And then let's divide each side to see what we initially started with. So our initial value, 337.5 divided by 0.42 gives us about, it says 803.6. So let's just say 803 milligrams.